Hi everyone, welcome to Concept in Medicine. In today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at the Vaughan Williams classification of antiarrhythmic agents. Very interesting, right? If so, kindly make sure to subscribe to my channel, like and share as well to keep receiving wonderful content from me. And also, don't forget to put on the notification icon. We should know that the Vaughan Williams classification of antiarrhythmic is the most widely used classification worldwide. But in 1991, there has been a repulsion against it by the European Society of Cardiology, where they brought another classification known as the Silicon Gambit. That was in 1991. But even with that, the Vaughan Williams classification still stands tall till date. The Vaughan Williams classification classifies the antiarrhythmic drugs or agents into five classes. We are going to be looking at all the five classes uh, with regards to the examples of medications under each class, the mechanism of action as well. We should know that the Vaughan Williams classification is based on the general effect of the antiarrhythmic agent. So now let's look at the classes. There are five classes. Class one. For the class one, they are termed as the fast sodium channel blockers. And we should know that with regards to the action potential phases in the cardiomyocyte, there are five phases. We can talk about the phase four, phase zero, phase one, phase two, phase three. And you should know that it always starts from phase four and ends with phase four. Phase four is what we term as the resting phase. So this, as depicted here, phase four, which is here, is what we call the resting phase. Telling you that for the resting phase, you have potassium ions leaving the intracellular space or fluid into the extracellular fluid. Then we have the phase zero. Phase zero is regarded as the depolarization phase. For the depolarization phase, what is going to be happening there? We are going to have sodium channels open and there will be sodium influx whilst the potassium continue to leak out through the potassium channels. So potassium will be moving out of the cells while sodium will be going into the cell. That phase we call it the depolarization phase. But you should know that the sodium channels, they are time bound, they are time dependent. So that phase tends to be wholly dependent on time. After that phase, the sodium channels will close. The next phase of the action potential in cardiomyocyte is the phase one. The phase one is regarded as the early repolarization phase. For the early repolarization, what is going to happen? By then, the sodium channels are closed. The potassium channels are still open where you have them leaking out into the extracellular space or fluids. And then you have the long opening calcium channels activated where you will start seeing a slow influx of calcium into the cell. And that is what will be termed as what? The early repolarization phase. As the calcium influx increases, it means you are reaching the phase two, which we call the plateau phase. And at that time too, the, the, at that time too, the potassium ions will still continue to leak out of the cell. That's what we call the plateau phase. There is massive influx of what? Calcium. Then from there, we move to phase three, which is known as the repolarization phase. By then, the calcium channels are closed and potassium still continues to leak minimally out of the cell. And during the phase three, the potassium that has leaked out of the cell will go back into the cell. And the sodium that has gone into the cell and the calcium as well will return back to the extracellular space. So in short, potassium will be entering the cell and sodium and calcium will be what? Moving out of the cell. That becomes the phase three, repolarization. I hope we've made sense out of that. Now, let's look at the classes. So the class one, 
is the fast sodium channel blockers. Why are we calling it fast sodium channels? Because as I said, they are time dependent. So the fast sodium channel blockers, that's a class one. The class one is subdivided into three subclasses. We have the class one A, class one B, and class one C. We are going to be using some techniques and mnemonics to easily remember these classes. For the class one A, always remember quarter per dose. What do I mean by quarter per dose? So the quarter per dose, the Q in the quarter stands for quinidine. The P in the pair stands for procainamide. And the D in the dose stands for disopyramide. So the class 1A antiarrhythmic agents are quinidine, procainamide, and disopyramide. So always remember quarter per dose. Quarter per dose. As if you have been given a dose to divide into four parts. That's quarterly and be taking quarterly per dose. So to remember, remember quarter per dose, quinidine, procainamide, and disopyramide. Easy as that. Now, for the mechanism of action, the class 1A antiarrhythmic agent, they depress phase zero. Phase zero, what did we say it, it is again? We said it's a depolarization phase. Where, what goes on there? Sodium channels are open for sodium to influx, and potassium channels are open for potassium to efflux, right? So we are saying that the class one antiarrhythmic agent they depress phase zero, and when they do that, they prolong the repolarization. And the repolarization that will be what phase three, right? Yes, let's move on to the class one B for the class one B. How do we go about the antiarrhythmic agents there? So in that case, for class 1B, always remember length per meter. Then you ask yourself, in mathematics, you measure length in what? Meters, centimeters, millimeters, and all that. But we are going to use meter to easily remember. So always remember length per meter. So what are these antiarrhythmic agents? The L in the length, becomes lidocaine, the P in the pair becomes phenytoin, and the M in the meter becomes what? Mexilectin. In short, the class 1B antiarrhythmic agents are lidocaine, phenytoin, and mesilectin. I hope that makes sense to you a lot. So always remember length per meter. Now, the mechanism of action for the class 1B antiarrhythmic agent, what do they do? They depress phase zero selectively. And when they do that, they shorten the repolarization phase. I hope that makes sense. Now, let's move ahead and look at the class 1C antiarrhythmic agent. For the class 1C, how do you go about it? Always remember fonts per meter. If you are typing and you are looking at the font size, definitely it's going to have a unit of measurement. And that we are considering as meter. So always remember font per meter. So for the font per meter, the F in the font goes for flakenide. The P in the pair goes for propafenone. And the M in the meter goes for morisicin. So in short, the class 1C antiarrhythmic agents are Flakenide, propafenone, and morisicin. I hope that creates a lot of sense. Now, let's move ahead and look at the mechanism of action. For the mechanism of action, the class 1C, they markedly depress phase zero. And by so doing, they exert minimal effect on repolarization. That is for the class 1 antiarrhythmic agent using the Vaughan-Williams classification of antiarrhythmic agent. Let's move on and have a look at the class two antiarrhythmic agent. All right, so let's look at the class two. For the class two, we have the beta blockers and we are going to mention some of them, not all the beta blockers, not all of them that belong here, some. 
to fit the acronym. So for the beta blockers, always remember meat pie, meat pie. So for the meat pie, the meat would correlate with the names and the P in the pie also correlates. So we are looking at metoprolol, exmolol, atenolol, timolol, and what? Propranolol. You should know that for the beta blockers, it involves both the cardio selective and the non cardio selective. If you look at the metoprolol, it's a beta 1 selective. It blocks only in the beta 1 receptors, which are dominantly in the heart. Then exmolol 2 is beta 1, atenolol 2 is beta 1. For the timolol, it's non selective. It can block beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. Just like propanolol 2, it's non selective. If you look at the beta receptor, beta 1 is in the heart, beta 2, the smooth muscles of the bronchi, and beta 3, if it's activated, it will cause the release of nitric oxide. And you should know that for both the cardio selective and the non cardio selective, they are without intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. They are without intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. Now, for the mechanism, what do they do? They decrease the slope of phase four. That is the resting phase. Let's move on to the next class. That's class three. For the class three, they are the potassium channel blockers. Potassium channel blockers. And to remember the agent, always remember SAID, S-A-I-D. So we have sotalol, amiodarone, ibutylide, and dofectilide. So sotalol is in addition to what it does, a non-selective beta blocker, meaning that it can also block beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 receptors. So in that case, it also acts on phase four. That will be the resting potential, as do the beta blockers in class two. Amiodarone, in addition to prolonging phase three, also acts on phase one, two, and four. For the next class, that's class four, they are made up of the slow calcium channel blockers. And for the slow calcium channel blockers with the agent, you are thinking of the non one for dihydropyridines, which includes verapamil and diethylazem. And what do they do? They prolong phase two. And phase two is what? The plateau phase. Then finally, class five. For the class five, they are agents with variable mechanism. Agents with variable mechanism. And what are the agents? Always remember MAD. So the M for magnesium sulfate, the A for adenosine, and the D for digoxin. And what do they do? They have a variable mechanism, meaning that they can act on all the phases in variable ways. So this, in all, is the Vaughan Williams classification of antiarrhythmics. Then finally, before we close the topic, how do we remember the classes? So to remember the classes, that is class one to class four. As for the class five, we know that is class of variable mechanism. To remember the class one to class four, class one is sodium, that's S. Class two is beta blockers, that's B. Class three is potassium channel blockers, that is P. And class four is calcium channel blockers, that's C. So we can say to remember class one to class four, you always remember sold by pharma companies. Sold by pharma company. The S for sodium channel blockers, that's a class one. The B for beta blockers, that's class two. P for potassium channel blockers, that's class three. The C for calcium channel blockers, that is class four. So to remember class one to class four, remember sold by pharma companies. As for the class five, is the agent of variable mechanism. I believe that we've created a very nice understanding of the Vaughan Williams classification of anti-arrhythmic agent. Thank you very much for staying through the lesson. Kindly make sure to subscribe, like, comment, share, and also tell me the next concept you would like to see in my next video. My name is Dr. Dell and this is Concept in Medicine.
Bye-bye.